All right, yeah, thanks for the chat responses and the poll responses. This is the first time I'm using one of these polls in an actual meeting with other human beings. So <laughs> it's very exciting and thank you for participating. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. Um, Carrie, I wonder if since it's like a smaller group, um, and I think most everybody is faculty or staff, um, we had kind of geared the presentation toward um, like students and talking about some of the student programs that we have, but I wonder if people maybe just want to um, share either like what they already know about the Lindy Center or civic engagement at Drexel and maybe like a question or something they were hoping to get out of today's talk so that way we can think about maybe tailoring what we talk about to the people that we have here. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, um, we can we can go through. I think sometimes it's easier to just go through the list. So if you don't and if you if you want to pass and just be open to like what we have to share and then open it up for questions, feel free to do so as well. Um, but yeah, like Kara said, if you if you don't mind sharing, um, maybe something that you if you if there are things you already know about the Lindy Center and what you're hoping to learn from or, or get out of, of this particular session with us. Um, so we'll start with maybe Fran. Uh, she's at the top of my list. <laughs> okay. Um, well, actually, I, I haven't done much work with the Lindy Center. I've heard the word, the term, and lots of uh, <laughs> discussion about it, uh, banting about, uh, you know, uh, and so I'm really kind of uh, wanting to learn more. I'm planning on doing a collaborative side-by-side uh, um, -side course in the fall with Christine, and uh, so I'm open to anything right now. Great, Christine and Christine, I saw you typed in the um, in the chat just more or, like more knowledge about organizations that we have partnerships. Yeah, with. I mean, yeah, we're um, my connection is that yeah we have uh, have had a couple of faculty go through the uh, CBL training, and we are you know we're involved in that, but um, not. But I need to know more. I'd like to know more about how it's con how the Lindy Center is connected. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks. And next on my list is Veronica. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Kara. Nice to meet you both. Um, I don't think I have anything in particular. Again, I wanted to just sort of like have increased awareness. That was my goal because I don't think I would be able to speak competently about what the Lindy Center does and has to offer. So that would be my goal to have more increased awareness by the end of this conversation. And, and um, um, sorry, I want to I want to clarify to Veronica, are you do you mean speaking with like what types of audiences are you speaking with? So I'm an assistant dean within CNHP, uh, like, like Fran. So we have a lot of communications, right, whether it be professional staff, faculty, students, sometimes even family members outside organizations. So I'm not entirely sure that if someone were to bring up the Lindy Center, Center that I could speak competently about what it adds to the whole Drexel University um, community. Sure, got it, thanks. Leah. Hi, yes, hi everybody. So I know a lot about the Lindy Center um, through teaching the Introduction to Civic Engagement course and communications with Kara and Carrie. Uh, for this particular topic, um, it's one that I think is really awesome, but I don't always know the best ways to promote CBL courses to students. Um, and also, I'm wondering if there is a way to do like the side-by-side -side CBL in some way with international communities, or are there CBLs that are focused on having a global perspective in Philly, like immigrant communities or some sort of global um, outlook as I'm a part of the um, TNHP Board of Global Healthcare Engagement. That's something that the um, some of the members of the board were curious to know if that was um, an option or what sort of things that would potentially address that, I guess, that topic. Awesome. Okay, well, yeah, thanks everyone for, for sharing. Um, 
And as I said, yeah, we had kind of prepared this with a specific audience in mind. So it's good to know what people are interested in hearing about. And I think um, what we can do is kind of uh, quickly go through just like some really general stuff about the Lindy Center, like why we exist, what value we have on campus and the different programs that we run. Um, and then Carrie can talk a lot more about the CBL parts of our work. Um, and then of course we can, you know, ha answer any questions or have any additional discussion that people are interested in. So um, yeah, so again, Carrie and I'm Kara. Um, I know it gets a little bit confusing, but <laughs> we have lots of hard C and K names in our office. So, um, so yeah, so some background on the Lindy Center just in general. So um, President Fry uh, did specify in October of 2010 in his convocation speech, we often refer back to that moment as um, kind of a defining moment in Drexel's history with civic engagement. Um, and so he said in that speech, he talked a lot about Drexel's moral and um, yeah, moral responsibility um, an obligation to the local neighborhood, to West Philadelphia and to Philadelphia, the city as a whole, um, and uh, talked about, uh, you know, our primary goal as an educational institution being to educate students um, and to prepare them to be problem solvers for some of the issues that exist in the world. Um, and so these are some of the really important um, goals that he laid out and he specifically said that he wanted Drexel to be the most civically engaged university in the United States. And so from that, um, there is a whole network of departments in Drexel's administration that help to carry out that goal. Um, and so the Lindy Center is just one in a network of, of different administrative departments that help um, work on that. And the Lindy Center specifically is an internal facing um, department. So we do, we have, you know, community partners, um, but our main mission is to help facilitate uh, engagement experiences for the Drexel community um, and also help to support people across campus. So faculty, staff, students, uh, student orgs, all different kinds of entities across campus that are doing engagement work. Um, so we really want to build a community of people who are interested in issues of justice, of making social change, um, of building relationships with community members, whether they be here in Philadelphia or at, you know, at people's homes, um, you know, in, in people's home countries and people's home states um, or globally. Um, yeah, so we want to kind of be a, a place where people can go if they're interested in these things. And we want to be able to provide resources for people to be able to accomplish what they want to accomplish um, and, you know, do the types of engagement that they want to do. So um, we have, you know, some some out of the box programming that we do ourselves, um, like the CBL faculty training um, and some student leadership programs that we have. Um, but we also, you know, are open to having conversations with anyone across campus about how this type of thinking, um, the, this type of work, this focus on community engagement and social change um, and relationships, how all of that connects to your work and how we can help support and facilitate whatever you might be doing. Um, so this slide shows some of the different dimensions of our work and I need to move stuff around on my screen because I can't see everything. Um, so we have learn, lead, serve, and partner. So as I said, these are just kind of some of the, the areas that we work in. Um, so in the learning area, you know, we do provide a lot of education um, about uh, social issues or skills that you might need to have to build relationships with other people or um, um, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, so so and and we provide training and support to faculty who want to teach um, what we call community-based learning courses. And then we have um, a community-based learning course ourselves that we manage, which is Civic 101, which is a course that all Drexel freshmen are required to take um, that teaches them kind of foundational elements of what civic engagement is and how they can be civically engaged um, and how they can examine their, themselves and their role in their communities and their role in larger systems um, and think about the ways that they have the capacity to make social change and what types of social change they might want to make. Um, so then we have this lead um, 
pillar as well, which is some of the leadership programs that we offer to students. Um, so we have a program called Drexel Community Scholars, which is um, a st for students to make a longer term commitment to um, almost like an internship um, or to doing direct service with one organization throughout a whole term at Drexel and they commit to doing a certain number of hours. It's five to 15 hours a week with the same organization for a whole term. Um, and then there's also other professional development and community building opportunities for people who are Drexel Community Scholars. There's Lindy. Um, so we run an after school program as well called the Lindy Scholars and students can be Lindy Scholar advisors, which are like tutors and mentors in that program. Um, we have teaching assistantships. So for the CBL courses, both Civic 101 and um, other higher level and department specific CBL courses that we teach or that we support, um, we offer teaching assistants who've been trained um, and can help facilitate discussions and other processes in those classes. Um, and then we have other just events, workshops, um, skill building, um, just fun stuff that we do like a first Friday when we're on campus every first Friday of the month we have um, coffee and donuts and some kind of engagement activity. Um, so we have other things that we do as well in the center just to build community and, and get people in and talking about the things we want to talk about. Um, and then obviously service. Um, so volunteerism is a big part of what we do, connecting students and employees through the Dragon Volunteers program with um, volunteer opportunities in the city. And someone had asked about kind of what organizations were linked to and through these opportunities. So through our, our CBL courses, through um, the, the service, um, you know, that we send students out to do. Uh, we have lots and lots of partners throughout the city of Philadelphia in all different areas of social issues. Um, we have like arts and culture partners, hunger and homelessness, um, community and economic development, um, animal rights. Uh, yeah, so, so we have education is a big one as well. So we have partners in lots of different sectors around the city and who are working on several different social issues. Um, and we're happy to provide like lists of some of our active partners or, you know, we're always happy for people to approach us if they have a specific topic they're interested in and they want to know what organizations are working on that. Um, or if they want to know if we have a contact at a specific organization, we're always happy <coughs> to provide that input. Um, and then again, I'm like, I have too many things on my screen. So I'm trying to see. Yeah. So, so again, that partner column is kind of what I was, what I was talking about. Um, and I guess we should define civic engagement. <laughs> um, so this is the working definition that we have of civic engagement, which is working to make a difference in community life through collective public problem solving. Individuals must develop the knowledge, skills, values, and motivation to do this work effectively. Um, so yeah, so kind of tying together some of the things that I was talking about, um, you know, we consider um, making a difference on par with um, making social change. You know, we acknowledge and we like to talk about and examine the ways that um, systems create inequality right now um, and the ways that there are issues in society um, and why they're there and what individual experiences of those issues might be and how we connect the Drexel community with all of that knowledge and information and, and help them uh, think about ways that they can be part of making change on those issues. Um, and then also, yeah, just the idea of this knowledge, skills, values, and motivation. Um, so those are, you know, what we're doing through all of our classes, through our programs. We're helping students gain knowledge, skills, values, and motivation so that they can be effective um, public problem solvers. And this is uh, one of the Carrie, also feel free to stop me at any time <laughs> if you want to jump in with something. Um, and yes, Veronica, we can absolutely send the PowerPoint deck um, out. I guess we can probably share it with Darren and then he can share it with everybody. All right, awesome. Um, so yeah, so this is a, a model that we like to use in our Civic 101 class to kind of think about um, the different actions that you can take to be civically engaged and sort of what, how to kind of assess um, the level of social change that you're making when you're doing these things and the m amount of relationships that you are making when you're doing these things. So, um, so as you can see, it's a graph uh, and there's social change on one axis and relationship on the other axis. And so what we're kind of asking with this is like in every action that you take, 
how much social change are you creating and how many relationships are you generating or how you know how deep are how deeply are you building relationships with other people in those actions and so there are some actions listed here but these are not the only actions you can take um, but this is something that we show students and we kind of ask them you know say you're doing direct service so say you go and volunteer one time at uh, you know to, to hand out meals at a place where people go if they are, are food insecure and they need a dinner um, how much relationship are you building there did you talk to other people while you were there did you talk to people who you were serving food to or did you just kind of show up do what you needed to do and leave um, and then how much social change is that creating like why does hunger exist in the first place and by feeding other people, are you creating social change and, and eliminating hunger in some way? Um, or is it, you know, putting a, putting a bandaid on the problem, providing a need in the moment, but not necessarily making social change? Um, so this is really a graph that's just meant to kind of get people thinking more deeply about what impact their actions are having and sort of to ask themselves how they can maybe have a deeper impact when they're, when they're um, taking action. So Carrie, I don't know, do you want to hop in? Yeah, um, and I, I apologize. Yeah, I thought I used the most current graphic, not the one with the typo on it, but on my last oh, screen, sorry. but no, that was my fault. <laughs> um, but we can actually, maybe, Kara, if we can skip to the, like, to, to the Lindy Center um, piece. We had, like, a little activity, maybe, assuming we would be working a little more with students, but, um, or having students uh, participate, but um, I think we want to maybe just share and use this time to share a little bit more about the Lindy Center and, and, and explain a little bit more about what we do and then open it up for questions specific to all the work that you all do and, and how you hope to communicate uh, the work that we do and connect people to our work as well um, in the ways that make the most sense. So I want to echo, you know, what Kara was saying about uh, facilitation. Like, I think we really see our role on campus. All of the things that were listed on that graphic around like leadership and service and um, partnership. Um, and learning, it all has a lot of those programs and, conti and our, our continual programs emerge from the interests and relationships that students and faculty have um, and partners have with our center. And so like we have, we've supported students in taking uh, community-based learning courses amongst their peers and that we have some courses that run like right very regularly every term and then we have some students that started whole nonprofits on their own because they didn't see something on campus that really matched their specific passion and interests um, we've had instructors develop whole courses alongside of us like spend we had just just had a faculty member um, implement a course where we worked with him developing a relationship with a community partner over the course of a year to really get a sense of what the partner's needs were, what the course's needs were, and develop over time a sense of what the course would look like together. Um, and then they implemented that course, and now they're still working together to think about what kind of deliverables and things can come out of that relationship. Um, so I think that's what we're always hoping to, to facilitate, is to make it easier for community organizations, community partners, community residents, um, to partner with students or access resources that, that are being offered by our students and instructors instructors and um, staff and then make it easier for our students, instructors and staff to be able to find things that they're interested in, have the capacity to do um, and are willing to contribute to. And I think um, to what Kara was saying, that we think about the ways that people can on campus and people in our community can become more informed about the issues to help think about like those issues around hunger um around economic development around incarceration around um aging i know fran and, and christina are really thinking through how to better understand the relationships around intergenerational communities um, and understand how to how to um, participate in this like age-friendly campus um, and how can we engage our community alongside drexel staff and instructors and students while doing that and, and create meaningful like uh, meaningful learning experiences for our students along the way as well. Um, and so, yeah, so I think that's really what we see as our, our goals and, and bringing in folks and, and um, doing that through relationship building. Um, so getting to know, and I think, so the ways to get involved with us is really um, by connection. It's through connecting to community partner organizations that we've developed relationships with so that we, if an instructor comes to us and says, I'm interested in doing this type of course, or a student comes to us and says, I'm interested in, in participating or engaging this particular issue, we have a sense of what kind of organizations 
work on that issue. We have an, a sense of what kind of, uh, what kind of settings that student could participate in. If the student says, I'm interested in criminal justice, you're like, oh, well, you could like, <laughs> you could go do court watch, or you could go to the prison, or you could do tutoring, or you could do reentry, or you could, there's like a, just a, and so we can talk to students and talk to instructors and think about, you know, there's these, these huge issues and really to try and find out what kind of, what type of engagement they want to participate in or they want to get connected to or they want to develop a course in. Um, and so really that's what that's what we our our center is meant to do is meant to kind of use those relationships that we have with, with community partners and vice versa when community partners say, oh I'd love to like I'd love to work with you all, I'd love to get volunteers. We kind of have a sense of um, what kind of community organs, what kind of uh, student organizations might exist on campus, what kind of faculty members teach around that issue and might be willing or interested in, in partnering. Um, so creating those connections, I think we, we see ourselves as, as trying to create those connections between um, folks who are trying to make a difference and trying to create relationship like that, uh, like we, we see on that graph. Um, so yeah, so we have that, those connections. We, um, we again, we, we offer, um, so Fran and Christine, I know you two are working on a particular class um, and and we should definitely follow up on um, on doing some some of the community based learning training specifically. Um, we'll do probably like a one on one because we're not we're I think we're not going to be able to offer the full training this summer. Um, but I'll work with you um, individually. But typically we offer when we are on campus and we will we're looking moving forward to doing one um, in a virtual space. Um, but we offer a training for instructors um, for faculty. I think we have over 100 uh, trained instructors at, at, at Drexel and in the surrounding area in community community-based learning. They've done a three-day training with our staff, um, done a full day um, with one of our community partners um, in the correctional facility, um, and learned how to develop, um, how to make a case for in the institution, in their department, in their um, specific discipline, how to, how to make a case for those types of courses, um, how to design those courses, how to implement those courses, everything from curriculum design activities in the classroom to like logistics about getting community students recruited and getting them signed into the class, um, getting space to hold the class in, all of those types of things. So we, we try and support community-based learning in that way. Um, and then also and we have help with advertising as well. And then uh, for civic engagement, we try and help students and instructors find community amongst other people that are doing this work. Um, so right now, this, this term um, and regularly, we try and host regular meetings for community-based learning faculty or, or book clubs for community-based learning faculty to come in and learn from one another. Um, to say like, oh, this, these are the things I'm trying out in my course. These are the tools that I'm using. These are the, the types of reflections that I'm using. Um, we try and create some type of, some form of community for our Civic 101 instructors, which uh, Leah is a really wonderful part of, um, especially this term. And then do the same thing for students. So to try and help connect students to other students that are interested in um, interested in and doing this type of work. So um, whether it's student orgs, student, uh, student groups on campus, whether it's ongoing volunteer opportunities with an organization that they might want to become invested in long term um, through programs like Kara mentioned, uh, the Drexel Community Scholars with work study, um, or helping to uh, or the Civic Learning and Engagement Certificate that's open to both undergraduates and graduate students, where students um, participate in a series of workshops as they do volunteer work in the local community. Kara, do you mind? Yeah, I'm gonna, <laughs> sorry. Thanks, um, so this is just a, a, a brief example of, of some of the partners um, that we work with. We do partner with um, the University Community Partnership, or we work within the University Community Partnership um, arm of the university that does feel it's hyper local so it focuses on services within the west philadelphia promise neighborhood um, a lot of the research projects that we help uh that we help support um, that we write letters of support help with grant to grant applications for tend to be pretty hyper local in the west philadelphia area but we also have partners across the city um, and to, to leah's question we have partners globally as well. We have a lot of uh, faculty and, and uh, students who are doing work um, both in Philadelphia and in, in, um, around the U.S. and then internationally as well. Um, so this, we wanted to highlight um, this particular partner uh, that we work with and uh, that's part of Drexel's campus, but also is part of our university community partnership team, um, is our community wellness hub that's at Dornsife, uh, the Dornsife Center for Neighborhood Partnerships. It's, it's a Drexel run, Drexel employed um, space for West Philadelphia community members to come in and receive 
um, direct service for for wellness and for um, they do they do wellness screenings they do different classes around health and health and wellness um, and it's a great place to to um, for students to volunteer for students to to um, to partner with I know we've had a few um, a few like NIH uh, partnerships with with faculty doing different studies and different research projects um, alongside the West Philadelphia community but that the the way that they they partner and the way that they kind of develop those relationships is through the wellness hub um, so yeah I mentioned that we have uh, our community-based learning we have our I know uh, Christine and, and Fran are specifically looking at a side-by-side -side class um, which is a tight we we have a number of different uh, community-based learning courses um, a, couple of different versions of it that that uh, that uh, our faculty and students engage in and our partners are partnered with. Um, one is the side by side class where it is 15, it tends to be 10 to 15 Drexel students and 10 to 15 um, community member students. So sometimes that's within the prison, um, sometimes in the in the correctional facilities where students go and actually take classes alongside people who are incarcerated there. Um, sometimes they're at Dorn, a lot of times they're at Dornsife with, uh, with some of our West Philadelphia community members um, who take classes alongside students. Um, and then we have them in a number of different other organizations as well. Um, we also have community hybrid classes where students take some of their classes at Drexel and some of their classes in the community. That An example of that's our story medicine course, um, where it's a writing course where students write plays. Um, they're, they develop and write plays here on campus and then they go to CHOP um, and they perform the plays for some of the kids at the um, in the wing there. So that's um, some of the courses are a mixture of on campus and off campus. Um, and then we also we have um, also have immersion courses where students travel internationally um, to, to engage with a community partner. And I'll talk about a few examples of these. Um, but these are all in addition to our like more traditional community-based learning where students are doing some type of volunteer requirement um, in, as a component to their course, which is our Civic 101 um, example. So these are some of the courses uh, that we've offered. I think one of the things that we talk about a lot, and I think um, in the context of like CNHP and, and, and the ways that it connects to our, our community-based learning model is a lot of our courses touch on health at some point. Um, and I know a lot of our courses, I think we had, we definitely had a few um, CNHP students who have gone through some of our courses, side-by-side um, -side classes and, and uh, international immersion courses as well. Um, I know Life is Beautiful um, by Ken Bingham. Um, they, it's a it's a um, hybrid course where students do some of the the classes. It's a writing course where they do uh, memoirs of of uh, patients in hospice, um, and so some of the the courses learning to write as a class, and then some of the some of the course time is spent with the folks that they're they're talking to and, and gathering information and, and helping to construct their memoirs. Um, and then story medicine again, it's it's uh, part of it's located at the hospital, but the, it's again it's a writing course where students are doing some of that on campus. Um, I think the to Leah's question, one of our, our um, more popular models as well is uh, is are the the courses that travel internationally or abroad. Um, so our disaster and resilience in Puerto Rico is a course that was um, a trip that students went to over. Um, it was at the beginning of the winter quarter, and they then they met after coming back and, and kind of talked about the experience of working with a community farm in Puerto Rico around like water um, harvesting and, and developing water filtration systems in Puerto Rico. Um, and they talked a Yeah, oh, sorry. Hi, Go ahead. Veronica. No, no, no. Hi. Um, since you just referenced international, I think Lee and I share that level of interest. But when a student does an abroad course like that, how long, is it for the entire quarter? Is it part of the quarter that are back for another, you know, how does mm -hmm. that visibly, visually look yeah it depends on the trip um, so the, the way that I know I believe that the um, the Haiti so the Haiti trip that you'll see that's on the uh, right side of the, the list that course is a condensed course so I believe they go for they go for a little bit longer and I'm, I'm gonna get the timeline <laughs> I'll, I'll have to double check on the timeline but they the entire course is condensed into the trip um, and so it's it's high it's like a high intense kind of learn learning model. Um, disaster and resilience is was like a ten day trip where they went to Puerto Rico and then th and that was part of the course and then they came back and they met weekly after they came back um, to the course. So I think each course is a little bit different. We also have a global classroom model that Adam Zahn um, in our uh, in our um, global learning office. Uh, Adam and, and Ahaji work a lot with uh, these types of 
different variations of international experiences tied to course-based um, learning. And, and one of the models they also do is engaging uh, international like classrooms, so classrooms around the world that meet regularly with Drexel uh, students. Um, and so they do virtual meetings between different students from different parts of the globe. Um, and that's the that's that like global classroom model. So yeah, there's a lot of different models for for um, for global learning. Yes, great. Thank you. No problem. And we and we um, I know, like, we'd be happy to talk to you, but we'd also be happy to like connect you to Adam and Aji and a lot of these folks who have done these classes and can talk right. to you. I've, yeah, I've done an intensive course abroad. So I was trying to get a sense of how an ICA difference mm -hmm. differs from some of the CBL options or, you know, formats. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of times it depends on the partner. It depends, yeah, it depends on like the, the, the department that it's being offered through all of those, those, those um, yeah, contextual factors kind of just often decide for the instructors which model they, they use. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so those, those are some of the examples I think, oh, I know um, the, the, the classes that we have here, um, like I think they, they span all of the different methods and models of, of community-based learning. Um, and we really do, we kind of work with each instructor after they go through the training and as they're going through the training and often before they go through the training um, in thinking about you know, what method is best for them. Um, and then what, what, what's entailed in that. I know um, a lot of our instructors, they spend a really long time kind of developing those relationships with community partners and thinking through, okay, what's this class gonna look like? Um, and, how, and, and even I think one of the things we also encourage instructors to do is think about like the first time they teach a course, and like the next three times they might teach a different version of that course. So the first time you might teach a, a community-based learning course, um, we encourage like a lot of our faculty to incorporate maybe components. So like if you're looking to do um, a global experience, like a, sometimes a, a global classroom is a good way to begin begin that type of instruction. Um, but you know, also I think that those ICAs are, are, are like going and doing that with another instructor is also a really good way to find entry as well. Um, and so what are the ways that, that we can help kind of integrate community-based learning in whatever way makes the most sense for you? Great. Um, yeah, and we do actually, I just would also say real quickly um, to Leah, I remember think I had wrote down Leah's question in the beginning about um, like local ways to think about global issues. Um, so we actually currently right now have a, um, one of our, our instructors uh, is teaching a class on sanctuary cities um, and is working with a, a sanctuary family in the United States. So thinking about, um, yeah, kind of global, con global issues. And I know Tony Pitak in our, uh, in, um, in our global, uh, I always get it wrong, global learning and modern languages um, department is, uh, she, she teaches classes on the history of Philadelphia, um, but she's also been working um, in developing a course on, um, on particular communities of Jewish immigrants in North Philadelphia and thinking about like what does immigration look like from, you know, a cultural standpoint and, a, um, and, a, and, and all of the different communities in, in, in our city. So I think, yeah, we, we have a, a few examples of, of uh, global learning that, that happens locally as well. I have um, a quick question. Yeah. Do you have um, CBLs for both undergraduate and graduate, or does it tend yeah. to be more one than the other? Um, I think a lot of our, um, both, yeah. It depends on the department. Um, so, so most of our, I'd say most of our CBL classes tend to be upper level classes. Um, I think it just helps, especially the side-by-side -side classes. It tends to help to have kind of older students <laughs> in the class. Um, sometimes first year, second year students um, can, yeah, it can just be, it, it can be, it's helpful to have students who are, you know, who are a little further along in their, their, their um, degree program, sometimes for requirement purposes or for, um, for just maturity level as well. Um, so a lot of our classes, I think that I, on that sheet, um, both allow graduate and undergraduate um, in them. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And this was, sorry, if you said this already, this was from this past winter or this is upcoming what's planned? This was this past winter. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to. Yeah. Check. Yeah. Um, and then, and we want, and so, I think at the Lindy Center, just again, we um, we try and seek to support students in whatever way that they feel most compelled to get engaged. So if that's through community-based learning, we try and help them get connected, find opportunities like teaching assistantships, find faculty that they can do individual um, independent projects with, find partners that they can do 
research or or, or partners um, or internships or um, different projects with. We've we've helped students get connected to a lot of different ways to to get involved. Um, we also recognize that not all students can do that through their curricular degree program. Sometimes we have students that are doing computer science or finance and they're really passionate or interested in education or other other types of, of uh, social issues. Um, and so we have this, uh, this opportunity called the Civic uh, Learning and Engagement Certificate Program where students can um, attend a series of workshops during their time um, as they volunteer, as they engage with, with a local community organization um, and come to these regular workshops to learn Learn about issues that that and reflect with others on issues that they're seeing and, and learning about while they're doing their their engagement work or their volunteer service or their um, the project that they're doing. Um, so we try and create multiple ways for students to be able to connect um, and reflect and learn um, with our office. Um, and then, yeah, this is, um, so we have a Civic 101 and CBL pro, uh, teaching assistant program where we have students that, that identify as leaders and they, it's paid. Um, they work with our Civic 101 courses to help our instructors um, teach these like 50 person uh, first year, often many, uh, mostly first year students, um, sometimes other, other students as well. But, uh, and then we also have a students um, that take CBL classes. So we had a student, I believe she was an, a CNHP student and her schedule didn't work out, but she was a really, she, she was transformed by Kang Bingham's Life is Beautiful class um, and wanted to be a TA. And so we were working with her and then we had a schedule conflict. But I think if, you know, we, we want to support instructors and faculty who either have students that they've that they've um, had in their class that want to continue involvement and want to support other students um, or students that just are, are really interested in this work and faculty who need a little extra help um, within the class and, and with logistics or facilitation as well. Um, yeah, and then this is just the Drexel Community Scholars, a way students can use their, uh, their if they're eligible for work study, if, and they want to, so if they take a community-based learning course, um, or if they just are interested in volunteering, they can uh, use, if they're eligible for work study, they can get paid for volunteering with a, a community organization um, through that program, or if they are interested, we'll help log hours, so we'll help students um, if they're doing ongoing and, and um, regular work with a, a particular organization will help them just track um, that engagement as well. Yeah, and then this is the program uh, that Kara had mentioned with Lindy Scholars where students can tutor and mentor um, middle school youth and they create kind of intentional community and workshops around working with those those youth and, and that's particularly focused in our West Philadelphia Promise neighborhood as well. Um, and yeah, and you can, and then this is kind of the easiest way for students to engage with our work as well as uh, staff to engage with our work um, is just using our website to find volunteer opportunities. So if, if students or if anyone is interested, um, they can either contact us or they can go through um, just our website to try and find out kind of what organizations and what opportunities exist. And I think, yeah, and then, oh, just, I would just give a plug. Um, I know Lee, Lee has come a few times, but we do, when we are on campus, we have a first Friday um, open house uh, series where we have folks come in on Fridays and it's usually around a particular issue um, or something that we wanna help students learn about or engage in dialogue around. Um, since we've turned into the online format, we've been having weekly Friday discussions. So we have, it's open for students and faculty and staff to come and discuss and just connect um, to other students who are interested in civic engagement and in building community with one another. Um, and that's every Friday at 11 o'clock. Um, so if, yeah, if anyone has students or if anyone would like to come um, while we're in this online space, we're, we're, um, we're open and that's at our, our Drexel Zoom room. Um, yeah. Um, and everyone, yeah, you can either come to our Zoom room or our Zoom room is open from 10 to 4, Monday through Friday, um, or you can email us to sign up for our newsletter um, or follow us on Facebook or Twitter and Instagram to find uh, regular updates about, about things that are going on in our office um, or just contact and, and reach out to, um, again, our email to, to um, connect with any of our staff members about any of, any of the programs or, or support that you might need. Yeah. So I have a question. Yeah. Uh, how is COVID-19 affecting the CBL courses? And are there <laughs> any running in the summer, like somehow virtually or? Yeah, so right now um, our, our spring CBL instructors are, are kind of rock stars. Um, they, 
they uh, most of them transition their courses to a uh, virtual spaces. So our class that's running this spring is on sanctuary that's on sanctuary cities. Um, the instructor has brought in to guest like to be guest speakers in the course. So rather than go out and engage as regularly as they want to, um, I just actually I was I sat in last night and they had the sanctuary family zoom in for the course and talked about their experience being in sanctuary in Philadelphia. Um, they've had like lawyers that work on that issue come in and give talks um, and then similarly our class that was meant to be an inside out class that went into the correctional facility um, it transitioned and so we've had folks that we work with regularly that we know really well that work in criminal justice that work that are formerly incarcerated kind of zoom in and talk with students and answer questions and those and, and do those types of um, forms of engagement and then our civic 101 <laughs> instruct uh, CBL classes uh, transition by offering just different ways for students to engage so yeah our, our spring CBL classes have transitioned um, and we actually do have a side-by-side -side class that's still running this this term um, that's with a local nonprofit organization and they're meeting via Zoom with the Drexel students um, as well. So our summer classes, we just had one class for the summer that's a, um, it's an engineering course where they're working with, uh, with sub local civil engineers. So we're working on recruiting for that right now, but they'll all, looks like they'll all engage virtually for now. Um, and then our spring courses, I think we're still waiting to see if we'll have to engage virtually or some kind of hybrid of virtual and 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 um, in person engagement. But I think yeah, Kara and I have and the Lindy Center have been we're thinking about how do we help students engage safely and responsibly and um, and also meaningfully. Um, and and what is like what is proximity? And one of the main core values of what we do is proximity, right? Is like getting students more proximate to the issues that they're learning about in the classroom, getting them more proximate to people that are directly affected, um, more proximate to the communities that they belong to. Um, and we've had to really think intentionally and critically about um, what proximity looks like, either in a virtual space or when when actual physical contact is dangerous. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? I guess it's not really a question. I guess it's just sort of a, a statement. So thank you to both Carrie and Kara, because I must say that I came in uh, totally not understanding about the Lindy Center, and I feel like I can smile and walk away like, yes, I got something out of this. This is awesome. Um, <laughs> but I you. think my my uh, focus of interest, that makes any sense, will be the international scope. Um, that's sort of where my heart is um, when I have sort of my extra time within the university. So, and even during faculty time. So I wanna probably discuss and see, again, I have a, an idea about the ICA, but I think I'm gonna spend some time on those two slides where you referenced about the international opportunities and how it fits in with students. And, um, cause you know, as of yet, I can see it in terms of maybe like, um, like my discipline is behavioral health, right? So mental mm -hmm. health. And we know that globally, this is of critical attention at this point. Um, you know, I had my whole deck of slides ready to go next week for the international global uh, presentations. And now I have to change everything around because of COVID-19, right? Mm -hmm. Because mental health is just so important. So, mm -hmm. and how we're defining it both nationally and internationally. So from a CBL perspective, I had never, addressed it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to sort of have a conversation about that. So I'll be asking for that time sort of off here, you know, offline here, because um, I want to definitely move that forward within um, CNHP. So mm -hmm. thank you for your slides. This was really helpful. Yeah. And uh, Veronica, I would also mention, um, so one of our, our faculty fellow, we have, I, I, this isn't on our slide deck, um, but we, we have uh, three faculty fellows within the, the Lindy Center. Um, one is, um, Two of them do mentorship to faculty that are teaching or developing uh, community-based learning courses. So they, Monica Tanya in our biology department, she works directly with instructors that are one-on-one -on -one to help them create and develop new uh, new community-based learning courses with with resources and kind of experiences. Steve Dolph um, is our other mentor, and he actually convenes a group of uh, faculty that are teaching CBL with a global 
engagement focus. Mm -hmm. um, and so he bring, he, while we were on campus, um, we were, and we we're kind of transitioning to the online space, but we, he was meeting with those folks about once a month to talk about like, what does global citizenship look like? Like mm -hmm. what does global civic engagement look like? Right. Um, how do we actually foster learning experiences that help students reflect on their connections and their, like their relationship and accountability to issues, to issues and people on a global scale. Um, and so I think that I, he, I think he would be a great person to talk to. Yeah, um, sounds like it. So I can, uh, yeah, if I just wrote down, would it be okay if I maybe sent, I can connect to you af like oh, after. Oh, absolutely. Yes, please do. Thank you. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, Veronica, that sounds like a good connection for the two of us, or actually uh, you, me, and uh, Jane for mm -hmm. our plan for the global classroom in winter. Mm. In yes. Winter. So we should probably talk to him. So we're, we're modeling along here. <laughs> so I actually have the um, undergraduate forum to go to, which is at so do five, I. <laughs> yeah, five o'clock. So I, I mean, I want to at least uh, do a bio break and all of that. <laughs> um, so, but this has been very informative. Uh, and again, I appreciate the time that you took uh, to do the presentation and also would appreciate the slides and we will be in touch. And Carrie, we definitely have to have the training because Christine and I actually met today and we started to kind of flesh things out as far as how we're going to be moving forward. We did apply for a grant. Um, I don't, you know about that, right? Yes, yeah, so I don't even have to say anything. Yeah, so, so we're excited about all of that. It's so. exciting, yeah. I'll follow up with an email right after this, yeah. Okay, sounds <laughs> good. That. Okay, Great. so thank, thank you again. And, and, good to see uh, you. Yeah, thank you, bye. All right. Bye. Well, thanks everybody for coming. Yeah, uh, thank you everybody. <laughs> Uh, if you have any other questions, send them my way and I'll route them out to you guys or you guys can reach them directly. Um, as soon as I get the slide deck, I'll route them back out. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, Leah. <laughs>